Okay, so I want you guys to pay close, close attention to every single small detail because it all matters. You see, I think too often real estate agents are looking for like this big, huge uh, uh, answer that's going to fix all their problems. The details are what matter. The top producing, most productive people on planet Earth are going to focus to these small, which seem insignificant details that I'm going to teach you guys today. But every single thing is going to matter because we need to be able to burn clean energy every single day if we're going to keep up with the amount of energy required to build a big listing agent business, okay? So let's jump right into it. Every single Sunday, every Sunday night, I have been teaching you guys this for years, but I'm gonna formally come out and ask that you guys all take about 30 to 60 minutes away from your families, away from your friends, and spend time planning the week ahead and reviewing the week that you just had, okay? So every Sunday night, I break away and I spend about 60 minutes creating a new action plan. And I'd ask that you guys do the exact same thing. What are the actions that you want to accomplish this week? We're not talking about necessarily goals. We're not talking about, I want to take two listings. I want to go on five showings. I'm talking about action-based items. These are items that you absolutely are in control of. So as an example, what, or what time do you want to wake up every single day, Monday through Friday? What time do you want to go to bed? What are you going to do throughout the day? Are you going to prospect for three hours, one hour, two hours, six hours, 10 hours? What are the things that you have control over? Those are the things that need to be on your weekly action plan, okay? So every Sunday night, you're going to say, okay, how did my week go? How many contacts did I have? How many hours did I spend prospecting? How many appointments did I set? You're going to update your, uh, your prospecting numbers tracker, okay? So you can keep all your numbers up to date so you can see where are the holes in my business? Oh, this week I only had 75 contacts. My business plan states that I have to have 30 contacts a day. I only made half the amount of contacts, okay? So these are the things that you need to be looking at every single Sunday night. We're going to update your tracker. You guys should all have access to the prospecting numbers tracker. If you don't, make sure you send an email to our support team, support at reverseselling.com, and we'll get you guys access to that tracker. So that happens every single Sunday night. Next. Now we're talking about the each night of the week. Like you've heard me say many times, tomorrow's success starts today. So we need to plan tomorrow today, all right? So here's what we need to do the night before. And you may say, Brandon, this is crazy talk. Why are you talking about all these small little details? Well, at the beginning of the training, I told you guys, all of these things matter. All of you tell me, Brandon, I want to become a huge success. I want to be a big time listing agent. I want to make all the money. Well, I'm sharing with you what all the people that make all the money do. It's up to you to take uh, action on these things. All right. So the night before, I'm going to ask that you take a hot shower. Okay. I want you to take a hot shower. I want you to go to bed clean and the heat from the shower will help you sleep better. We don't have time to look at all the benefits and me to go through all these benefits. If you want, YouTube it. There's so many benefits for taking a hot shower at night so that you sleep well. We are under underestimating sleep. I'll tell all of you, you guys are all underestimating the power of sleep. All of you. I did it for years. I took the advice of Gary V and I said, sleep is for the broke. That is bullshit. Sleep is for the rich. You need good sleep because we need the energy. Next, we need to go to bed at the same time every single night. This whole nonsense of staying up watching your favorite Netflix series till one in the morning, 
if you're going to win in this business, you have to get a, a good six, seven, eight hours of sleep. If you don't, you have no chance, you have no chance to have the amount of energy that you absolutely need if you don't have good sleep. So you have to go to bed at the same time every single night. Next. Now it's the morning of. We need to wake up at the same time every single day. My recommendation is that you are up no later than 6 a.m. No later than 6 a.m. We're going to sweat for 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to get, we're going to release dopamine. We're going to sweat. I'm not asking you that you need to be an Olympic sprinter, but I am asking you that as soon as you wake up, as soon as you wake up, that you get going and you start to sweat. You're going to take the dog for a walk. You're going to spend some time going on a jog. Whatever your workout is, you're going to sweat for 20 to 30 minutes. As you're sweating for 20 to 30 minutes, as you're working out in the morning, because we need that energy, we need to burn off the stress from the day previous. If you're going to be a listing agent, is there going to be stress? You all should be saying, absolutely, there's going to be stress. Do you need focus? Absolutely, you need focus. Do you need energy? Absolutely. How do we get that? Good sleep and working out. So we're going to sweat every day. As you're working out, we're going to listen to something positive. Maybe you're going to listen to my voice on the online training portal. Maybe you're going to uh, listen to your favorite YouTube video. Maybe you're going to digest your audio books. Okay, you're going to listen to things positive as you're working out every day. Let's keep moving right along. Sorry, I'm still getting over this damn sickness of mine, my sinus infection, so bear with me. Next, after you're done sweating for 20 to 30 minutes a day, we're gonna review our vision, mission, and goals. We're gonna look at our vision board, we're gonna read our vision letter, and we're gonna review our business plan. If you haven't done those things, you've got homework. All of you right now, as you're watching this video, I guess depending on where you're at in the online training, you should all have your vision board created, your vision letter written to yourself, and your business plan. Those three things you're gonna review every single morning. Next, I'm gonna ask, and make sure you review this with your doctor, I am not a doctor, but I'm gonna recommend that you skip breakfast and you fast every day, Monday through Friday. Brandon, why am I gonna skip breakfast? Why do you want me to fast? Well, when you don't eat, you can have water and coffee as much as you want, no eating in the morning. As soon as you eat, you start to deplenish your energy and your focus because your body needs that energy to digest the food. You need your energy for what's coming next. Well, well, Brandon, what's coming next? Your favorite thing, prospecting. So we're going to ask that you skip breakfast and get right into your morning prospecting at 8 a.m. I'm gonna recommend that all of you, as a minimum, have a three-hour prospecting in the morning broken up into two, listen closely, for some of you new agents, this, you haven't heard this before, two 90-minute call blocks. You're not going to go three hours straight. None of you can do that. I can't do that. Nobody can do that. Two 90-minute call blocks. Here's what you're going to do inside those call blocks. 7.55, you're calling the fresh expired listings. The brand new expired listings that expired last night at midnight, you're calling the fresh ones at 7.55 in the morning. You're gonna follow that up by calling the fresh for sale by owners, followed by the fresh for rent by owners. You're then gonna turn right back around and do the same thing again. You're gonna call those three lead sources as many times as you can, the fresh ones, repeating for that first 90 minute cycle. Too many of you are only attempting to contact these lead sources once, maybe twice. It is imperative that we contact these new leads as quickly as possible. So that might mean that you need to contact the fresh expired Fizbos for rent by owners three, five, 12 times day one. This is the black hole prevention plan. 
Then you're going to take a little break. And you're going to follow that up in 15 minutes starting at 9.45 a.m., which is your second prospecting session of the day. You're going to start that session by calling your specialty lead sources. So if you're calling absentee owners, probates, referral partners, circle prospecting, whatever your fourth lead source is going to be, that source is going to be called at 945 every single day, Monday through Friday. No leads left behind. Then your last 30 minutes of your second prospecting block is going to be spent calling the old expireds for sale by owners, for rent by owners that you have not yet made contact with. That little 30 minute block of time should help most of you that have leads falling through the cracks. Now we're at 1130 because you're going to take another 15 minute break. At 1130, Here's what you're going to do. This is for you, Joe Bennett, and everybody else that has problems with lead follow-up because it's not detailed. You don't have a schedule. You don't have a plan. So you should have a folder or somewhere where you have your leads organized. We'll talk more about that in another session. You're going to call your daily hot leads first, right at 1130. Then you're, on Mondays, especially, you're going to call your weekly follow-ups. Then you're going to call any monthly follow-ups that you have. Because every month, you should be building a seller lead database. Then any quarterly follow-ups that you have, your sphere of influence. We're going to teach you that in just a second. And then you're going to end that 30-minute session with any upfront listing agreement calls you need to make. Well, Brandon, upfront listing agreement call, what is that? We're gonna teach you guys that. Ryan Rogers, I've never taught that to you yet. I'm gonna teach it to you. Now we're at 12 o'clock. 12 to 12.30, if this is not scheduled, it will not happen, and this is why you're overwhelmed. 12 to 12.30 is all prospecting cleanup. It has to be scheduled. 30 minutes every single day, you should be creating an absolute disaster between 8 a.m. and noon with all the prospecting that you're doing. You should be having your lead sheets all over your desk because you're not stopping prospecting as you're generating leads. You're just filling out your lead sheets, updating your weekly tracker as you go, and at the end of, uh, at about 12 o'clock, you should have two, three, four, five leads that need to be inputted, input into any of your lead follow-up databases. Maybe you're using a CRM. Maybe you're using BombBomb. Maybe you're, whatever follow-up system you're using, you need to clean up the leads that you generated or appointments you've generated and get those put to where they need to go. I'll make another video. We'll talk about that. Uh, at another session in the future. Okay, now let's talk about lunch. It is 12.30. My recommendation at 12.30 to 1.30 is that you guys take a mental break. For one hour, you break away and you have lunch with either by yourself or with a referral partner, CPA, financial planner, divorce attorney, one of your RPs or your referral partners. And make a note of this. We are not bringing the cell phone. You have to have a mental break. Just practice blind faith when I tell you. You just spent the last three, three and a half, four hours on the phone. You need a mental break. Don't start scrolling through Facebook and going through text messages and emails. Don't worry, we've got time for that. Leave the cell phone behind. You'll have a nice mental break for lunch. If you're having lunch by yourself, it is great time to just relax. Meditate, just chill out. 
or you're having lunch with a referral partner. That goes from 12.30 to 1.30. We're back at the office, we're back at the home office at 1.30. We have two hours that are scheduled, 1.30 to 3.30, for all of your administrative tasks. Your follow-ups, your text messages, your emails, your uh, inputting listings, CMAs, appointment prep, following up on inspections, negotiating contracts, presenting offers. So what does that mean? If an offer comes through at 9.30, you know you have two hours this afternoon to get to that. You don't have to drop everything like most realtors. Oh, I got an offer. I'm dropping everything. No, you've got time allotted for that. If you're ever going to reach high levels of production, which every single one of you told me is what you want, we've got time booked out for that. 1.30 to 3.30 is when you take care of all of your income servicing activities. All the income producing activities are done between the hours of 8 a.m. and 12. Everything else is gonna be put off to 1.30. All right, that brings us to four o'clock. All of you should have two appointment slots on your calendars. One at 4 p.m., one at 6 p.m. Your job is to fill them. So you're either gonna go on an appointment, that includes inspections, ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna go on an inspection, you're gonna show properties to buyers if you're still working with buyers for some reason. You're supposed to laugh. You're gonna go on a FISBO preview appointment or a listing appointment. You got two slots per day. Well, Brandon, what if they wanna do that in the morning? Most of the time, they can bend their schedule to meet yours. We just have to strengthen our approach and ask for what we want. Well, Brandon, I can't meet with you tomorrow at four. I can meet with you tomorrow at 10.30. Okay, no problem. We gotta stop that immediately. Well, Bob, you know what? That doesn't work. I've got tomorrow at four or six, which is better for you. Well, that doesn't work. Okay, what about the next day? We've got to, the tighter our schedule, the more money you're going to make, I promise. So we've got a four o'clock and a six o'clock spot open for appointments. Well, Brandon, what if I don't have any more appointments or if I don't have any appointments? This is where we're gonna make additional contacts. We're gonna go through again the new expireds, the new for sale by owners, the new for rent by owners. We're then gonna call all of the non-contacted expireds for sale by owners, for rent by owners. And then we're gonna end the prospecting session around 6 p.m. calling our specialty lead sources, sphere of influence, past clients, and referral partners. That is your daily schedule, daily schedule. I'm gonna to go to the weekly schedule now and then I'm gonna open it up for some Q&A after we get done, don't worry. This is what you need to do every day if you have a chance at making it in this business. If I followed you around with a stopwatch, how close does your daily schedule reflect what I just outlined? That is the question for you to answer to yourself to reflect on. Weekly schedule. All of you, including myself, should have one late night prospecting session for 90 minutes per week. I recommend that you have that on hump day or Wednesday nights. It's right at the middle of, uh, of the week. And from about 6 to 7.30, one 90 minute outbound focused calling session once per week should be on all of your schedules. Mondays are made for follow-up calls. So now we're talking about the weekly schedule. Mondays, we're gonna be following up with all of our hot lead category. For sale by owners, expireds, for rent by owners, absentee owners, I told you, yes, I wanna do something now. All of those calls are gonna be made on Mondays. Wednesdays are designed to send out a video email to your database. 
including for sale by owners, expires, any email address that you have, your job is to build that database. Every Wednesday, they should be seeing you on camera talking through a real estate tip, market update, an interview with your referral partner, or spotlighting a local hotspot. Every Wednesday, they should be seeing you do that. Friday, you should be texting out all of your hot leads, all of your expireds you've been talking to this week, all of the for sale by owners, all of your hottest leads should be getting a text message from you every Friday. All right, next. Every Friday on your schedule, you should be updating your sellers. We're gonna have another training session. There's a lot more listing-based training coming for you guys soon, but every Friday is when you should be doing your seller update phone calls. Now, there's a lot of information that gets uh, inputted into that Friday update call, but if you're missing those calls, you're missing the boat. You're losing your opportunities to ask for referrals, you're asking for sellers to get pissed off at you, and you're not doing your job because you told the seller, I'm going to update you every single week with exactly what's going on, and I'm gonna tell you the truth no matter what. Fridays is when you do that. Sunday night, we already talked about it, is your nightly review, your weekly review. All right, now we're talking about monthly. Every month, my recommendation is that you have two Saturday morning prospecting sessions. Two Saturday morning, 90 minute prospecting sessions on your schedule every month. Those are gonna take place of you sitting at open houses. Every month, we need to be sending out a mailer to the database. So in your schedule, just mark the day. So it's sitting there looking at you every single month. I need to get a mailer out to my database. If you're gonna be a big listing agent, we need to be sending out a direct mail piece to the database once a month. It could be a, a, a front and back letter talking about the market, giving them advice about the market, in a little piece about what's going on in your life. Building and strengthening that relationship, building that top of mind awareness. And then the first Monday of every month is when we're making our nurture follow-up calls. So when I referenced earlier on in the daily schedule, having time to make your monthly follow-up calls, this is what I was referring to. The first Monday of every month, all of your nurtures, and a nurture is somebody that wants to do business not within 30 days, but sometime in the future, we need to be touching base with them on a specific month, and we're gonna pull out that month, and on the first Monday of that month, we're gonna call them all. This is how you make sure your leads are not falling through the cracks. We're gonna go through quarterly and annually, and then I'll open it up for some questions. Quarterly. Every quarter, we need to be touching our database sphere of influence and our past clients. This is probably one of the biggest areas that realtors neglect. And I'm gonna give you a very simple, straightforward strategy for touching your database four times per year through the thing you hate the most, the phone. Here's what you do. Every January, and I'm, we're gonna have a whole deep training on this, Every January, you're gonna do a real estate review. The same way your CPA meets with you every single year to do your taxes, the same way your financial planner meets with you every year to do your financial plan, you as a real estate agent that tell me all the time and tell all your friends, this is a relationship business, I care a lot about my clients, you're gonna do an annual real estate review. You're gonna call your clients your past clients, your sphere of influence, maybe you got 100, 200, 300 people, you're gonna spend the whole month of January doing your annual client reviews. You're gonna do a CMA, you're gonna find out if they need to refinance or if their current interest rate is in line with the marketplace. 
You're going to ask them about any, net, uh, any home improvements that they have uh, coming up. They could potentially do a debt reconsolidation loan to, to make that happen. It's your job to keep them up to date with the value of their property or they're going to list it with somebody else and then you're going to want to get mad at them. No, you are in control. Number two, in April, second quarter, you're going to call the same people with a specific value add, reminding them to get their air conditioning unit re, uh, looked at and their sprinklers and water turned on. You're gonna make referrals, you're gonna make connections, you're gonna provide value, you're gonna remind them every single April. Hey Bob, it's Rita calling again. Oh, dang Rita, you know what? It must be time to get the water turned on. Thank you so much, that's right. You're calling with a specific purpose. You wanna stay top of mind, you wanna earn referrals, this is how you do it. Quarter three in July, the phone call to the database, Sphere of Influence past client database, is gonna be inviting them to an annual get together, an annual event of some sort. Talk about that in just a second. In July, we're calling them to invite them to some type of annual client event. Well, Brandon, I've never done a client event before. We'll start. You're here to become a top listing agent, a top real estate professional. And then in October, fourth quarter, we're gonna call all, all of our sphere of influence, past client database, and uh, remind them to get their furnace looked at, winter's right around the corner, and getting all of their sprinklers and waters blown out. I just did all of this with my database. Maybe you guys saw a video I made on my Facebook. Can't tell you the power of this. Can't tell you, can't have you understand what would happen to you and your business until you do this. It's incredible. Those are your four touches for your sphere of influence and past clients because that is the biggest neglected uh, group of people that we don't call. Well, Brandon, I don't know what to say. I don't wanna call and say, hey, Bob, this is a business call. Well, you're not gonna do that with your best friend, Brian, but you can call him with absolute value with the four things I just said. Annual, once a year, I'm gonna ask that you have some type of client appreciation event. Have a barbecue, make it simple, if you cook hot dogs and hamburgers and have some beers and waters, that's fine. Until you start to build up your cash flow, build up your business, your client events should be something that your database looks forward to every, every year. I'm doing two events right now. My next one's on October 22nd. We're doing a kids uh, pumpkin painting event. And we're gonna have, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. Cider, donuts, and then we do another one in the summertime. It's like a fair. I've talked about that before.